Well, welcome back to Breakfast. Now, following the success of blockbuster movie Avatar, 3D technology is about to be launched in our lounge rooms. Now, Gadget Girl and editor of NZ Girl T Twyford is just back from the world's biggest electronics expo in Las Vegas, <laughs> where she saw the 3D TV in action. This is the CES conference. Yeah. What's it like? It's pretty overwhelming. I mean, it's set in Vegas, so that itself is... A whole bigger lot than, of crazy. Bigger than, anything. <laughs> bigger than Texas. Yeah. Pretty much, pretty much. Um, so, yeah, so CES stands for Consumer Electronic Show. It's the biggest technology roadshow in the world. There's like 100,000 people that are, you know, walking through, nearly 3,000 exhibitors, four days plus press day. Um, you're getting up really early to get to things. There's sort of things right through late into the night. I think it's in your just, notes yeah. you said it was like the um, New York Fashion Week of, yeah. <laughs> of tech. Yeah, pretty much like the Super Bowl of the New York Fashion Week of um, you know, technology was a good way of having a sort of analogy as to how it um, related. Well, I mean, is it, you, you, is it just geeks? Is it just yeah. the stereotypical <laughs> geeks? And me. And, oh. <laughs> Uh, mainly men? Yeah, lots of guys. Um, and so there's sort of a mix of, um, not just anyone can sort of get in there, it's mainly sort of press, there's bloggers, there's um, analysts kind of reporting on things like trends like 3D TV, mm. and then a whole lot of buyers. So there was quite a few kind of people from New Zealand looking at what was cool to be able to bring back for us. To right. Purchase later in the year? Later in the, later in the year. I mean, some of this technology is well, well out though, isn't it? I mean, this is yeah, sort of some of testing it is. the ground. But some of it will be um, sort of as is the case with sort of 3D that we're talking, TV that we're talking about today, um, was all kind of sort of demos or what it might look like, and then they'll be sort of phasing it in as the year goes by. So it is possible that, the end of the, that by the end of this year, some of us will be watching 3D in our lounges? Yeah, yeah, those that are um, early adopters. Early ad what, what's the experience like? Um, it's, it's, yeah, it's kind of like a smaller scale version of when you go to the, the movies and you've You've got a screen So you're just 3D. sitting there in your living room with a pair of glasses on watching 3D? Yeah, so you do have to have um, the 3D glasses on while you're watching, apart from sort of a few sets that have seemed to have developed um, the ability to just be standing there normally. But um, sort of when I was checking those out, you have to be in a very specific, um, I think Samsung debuted one of those, but you've got to be in a very specific kind of sweet spot, so not ideal for a full couch. Right, people. so if you were standing in one part of your lounge, you can watch it in 3D. If you're sitting in another part of your lounge, not does it look so like good. a normal TV or does it look also double kind of all, vision? You know how you get that kind of ghosting kind of vision? You know if you sit in the wrong place, if you didn't book early for Avatar and you've got a seat like right in the front corner and it's all distorted. It's yeah. a little bit funny. Yeah. Um, I mean... There's not much to watch in 3D. You're going to watch old movies from the 1950s <laughs> or Avatar, yep. or you're kind of, you know, you're not going to be watching the news in 3D or anything like that. Now, yep. what will the future be? What's the thoughts over there as to where we'll go with this? Yeah, I mean, well, that is um, a genuine concern. I mean, if there's only sort of, I think last year, there's sort of five movies that came out in 3D, so that's not necessarily a good incentive for you to go out and purchase a new TV if there's only five movies you can be watching on it. So all the sort of big companies that were debuting TVs had partnerships with them. So like DreamWorks, all their movies will be coming out in 3D um, from sort of moving on. So you'll be able to get 3D sort of Blu-ray versions. Um, ESPN announced they'll do the Football World Cup this year in 3D. Really? <gasps> really? <Everybody? laughs> I, know. I just can't picture. I mean, I wonder if this was a similar situation to when colour was introduced and there was a couple of shows in colour and everyone went crazy, but it's not yeah. like we'll be watching the whole you know, and every TV program will be in colour and then all of a sudden it is. Yeah. D is the thought that at some point in the future we will only watch 3D television? Oh, I don't know. That's a bit of a, um, <laughs> bit of a prophecy to be <laughs> saying. I mean, just we, we, we were treated, subjected to quite a lot of 3D footage while we were there um, and some things are really fantastic and I thought sports would be a bit overrated in 3D but it was pretty phenomenal watching um, someone running around sort of a track race, 100 metre sprint in 3D. I sort can't of, even, I it's can't like even imagine it. It's like sport no. went into HD TV and you sort of started to see the sweat dripping down. Do you need to see that? I don't know. <laughs> Integration is another big thing. Yep. You know, suddenly everything is coming to the TV in your lounge room. Mm -hmm. What was happening over there? Um, one of the really cool applications of that was being able to, um, LG and Skype have partnered up so you can be Skyping in HD on your television. Which I think is pretty fantastic. In HD. Yeah. So then you're seeing the sweat of the people that you're, <laughs> you're talking to. That is neat though, because at the moment, I mean, my Skyping experiences are, are blurry and they're yeah, a little stuck bit on stilted. The and and it's, so this is just top quality mm -hmm. Skyping material. How far off are we from getting something like that here? Uh, we have to talk to the New Zealand government about our broadband <laughs> first. Um, yeah, again, sort of starting to roll out as the year goes by. No one was really making any firm commitments in terms of dates for things. What were the other big trends at the conference, at the expo? Um, well, 3D TV dominated everywhere you were. It was there. Um, we started to see um, 
sort of, I guess, bigger TVs. There were some really massive ones on display. There were some really thin ones. I think um, might have shown up before. Um, you know, it was thinner than a, a lip gloss was the analogy people were using. They're just tiny. And see it. I know we, we've talked a lot about 3D. I'm still curious to know if this is where we're going to end up. Is it? I mean, is it possible that this is just one of those gimmicks? Like, yeah, I guess we have to wait and see. I do think it really does depend on um, on how the content comes through in 3D, mm. whether it is worth watching and whether it is worth investing in a set yourself. And I think it'll just, I guess, snowball. It'll snowball. And you talked about early adopters before. I mean, the first sets, I guess, that come here will cost an absolute fortune and we'll all have to look slightly idiotic <laughs> sitting around in our living rooms wearing these, won't we? <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, one of the things um, that they were all saying was they, um, I guess the electronics industry, after a really tough 2009, realises, you know, everyone's just gone and upgraded and bought HD TVs and yes. big screens. So to make a really prohibitive high cost of a 3D set is not really going to work in their favour. So, again, haven't announced the cost, but they're looking to be in a reasonably affordable. Interesting. Mm. Very, very interesting. T, thank <laughs> you for that. I'm sure you had an amazing time over that. That is our Gadget Girl, T Twyford.